You're on. Thank you. Uh, good morning. It's uh, Monday, October 15th, the Duncan Borough Board of Selectmen's meeting. Let us begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, first item on our agenda is opening of bids for the police facility design. And we have one bid, is that correct? Yes, one. And that bid is from uh, Harriman in. Uh, Smith. Yeah, lots of copies here. Let's see. And it is for a uh, total price of $18,500, which includes a space needs assessment, program development, pre-schematic design plan, a total project cost estimate and schedule, and a final report. Um, and then addition to that, including a photorealistic renderings and a physical model would be uh, Fifteen hundred and thirty-eight hundred, respectively. Thanks. <coughs> so again, that's uh, so the, the bidding for this part of the project's over now. It is, right? Well, unless we decide we want to rebid it. We have one respondent, which is which is uh, here, and uh, that's the bid for the police facility work. Uh, I didn't go through it in any detail at all, but uh, what they bid for the project is eighteen thousand five hundred dollars, uh, and then there's a couple of extras they can do with a physical model and stuff beyond that. So I want to suggest that uh, before we go any further with this, uh, we need to spend some time looking through it and making sure it meets all of the bid requirements. Uh, and, uh, and then um, we'll see where we go from there. So it would have been nice to have more than one respondent, but <coughs> one is better than none, for sure. What is the name of the company? Huh? Harriman. H A R R I M A N. And they are out of Portsmouth. <coughs> so, any other thoughts at this point? No, I think it's about where we want to be. Sure. All right, so let's put this on the agenda for our next meeting. Mm -hmm. We'll all get a chance to look at look through it. <coughs> Most uh, particularly you, Chief, we now and then. Yeah. And uh, just the same. <coughs> all right. Uh, next uh, is public input. Oh, Mr. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Yeah. You want me to come up front? Sure. Or? Come on up. Hi, I'm Lloyd Wood. Lloyd Bill Holmes. Nice to meet you. Thanks. 
Bill Markison. Sure. 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 Uh, have a seat. Good morning. Um, I just like to you know, go over um, the town attorney has been dealing with my attorney, and I feel as though there's been some uh, gaps. Uh, information has been lost, or what well, my attorney gets emails from your attorney, and uh, things I, I feel different uh, than what's really happened. I'm up there uh, cleaning it up, um, and I see emails coming back to you people, the information you guys are receiving, and it's saying I'm doing nothing, and uh, it's not the case at all. Uh, we tried to put together an agreement as to the cleanup. Um, I really think actions speak louder than words, and I, Jack Parsons been up there a couple times, and you know he leaves with one thing and then that, I know somehow it gets back to, to the your attorney, and it seems different. I don't know if it's, um, if you generally would want to come up at some point, if that's necessary, or if you're, uh, if Jack is the final say, um, I don't know. But I've been, like I said, I you know, would appreciate some, I think there's a lot of communication, and it's costing me a lot of money for a lawyer, and it's, uh, I assume it's, well, I mean, I'm a portion of the town, too, so it's costing my tax dollars, you know, and I want to avoid that, and uh, uh, I mean, the, going to court, they, uh, I don't want to do that. I spoke to Jack, Jack does not, I don't think anybody wants to go to court. Right. You know, uh, so I don't know what we could do to, um, I'd rather deal directly with either you guys decide it's Jack, or you, or, mm -hmm. you know. You know. Um, there are a couple of questions that I've asked, and I don't know if you want to, you know, research this more or not, but um, I want to put up a, a tent there to store some of the items that are outside of some of the plates, and um, I'm told that that's not uh, appropriate on that property. A friend of mine, I'm busy working, so I didn't call. A friend of mine called Jack and asked what this, uh, on the tent, what the uh, restrictions were. They said there's no step back. They said there's um, a joint permit. So we, I put up one tent, and I was ready to, uh, I, I spent um, a lot of money with Steve Hunter to level the area. And uh, I bought this and now my attorney advised me not to put it up until I get permission from you guys. And I don't understand. Uh, well, like, is it you people that are going to give me the permission? Is it Jack? And, uh, you know? Well, Jack's been the, been the point person. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it does mean that we're going to have to go up and take a look. Try to coordinate what we're doing. Yeah. We can certainly schedule a time where we can come up and walk the property with you. That would be great. Which it, property would we walk? Whichever, I mean, there's the, I mean, I've got, I, I don't know if you're familiar or not, I've got, on Lundit Lane, I've got 118 acres up there. Then I've got, up in Hidden Valley, I've got a house. So the 10 sites on Lundit Lane? Yes. Okay. Why don't you let us get with Jack, okay. figure out a time that's convenient for sure. everybody. I know that Bill's and then out of town a lot, so we've got a, okay, it, yeah. might, it might be, a, it won't be tomorrow. No, no, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and I will tell you that the last, um, of course, well, uh, that the, the last meeting that we had with respect to the situation, mm -hmm. um, my sense is from people on our side that, uh, that you're moving in the right direction, uh, that, okay, that things good. are happening. Okay, that's, uh, I, I wasn't getting that from, so, and, and, and I, I know they're still working on a timetable for yes. some of this stuff and that sort of thing. Right. So, yeah. um, it's, uh, I, I guess personally I would applaud you for working on it and you got a lot, a long way to go, uh, a lot of work to do to get it. Right. And, and, and uh, uh, I would encourage you to keep working on it because I, I, I as, as long as you continue to work on it, things are gonna get better. And it's uh, a big project. So there's always going to be a little bit of friction along the way. Uh, hopefully that's not disabling anybody. Right. Well, you know, it's, so it's, it's good. Not, you know, it's, it's, it's good that you came in. Yeah. And it's what it is. I mean, communication, and I know Jack has my phone number, so he can get a hold of me. And, mm -hmm. you know. All right. So, All right. All right. So is that good. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thanks, Bill. See you. Yeah. Okay. So make a note of that, Karen. It's very easy to get tickled on that. What's that? 
I was telling Karen to make a note that we need to set up that meeting. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Because I'll forget. All right. Uh, any any more public input? All right. Let's go to uh, approval of minutes. Regular meeting on October first. <coughs> I have nothing. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, and then we have a uh, non-public on the first also? I have nothing to change. Okay. I'll move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Selectman's work session on Friday, October 5th. All I have is the non public on that. Yep. Would you like to look on? Yeah. Oh. <coughs> I have nothing. I, I didn't see any. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And finally, uh, non public on uh, October 5th? I have no changes. I'll move approval. Uh, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need to keep these sealed? I don't know. Uh, I think for the moment we should. All right. So, Next up, we have a uh, presentation from CAI Technologies on GIS mapping for the town of Tufton Road. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. I'll put this out. All right. Okay. All on the Hmm? Not sure how we wanted to proceed with this. I had provided a, um, a proposal based on the meeting that we had uh, a few weeks ago. Um, if there's any questions directly about that, I certainly can answer them. Or uh, do you want me to just dive in and start showing you what we've talked about doing? I mean, there's two. There's two components to what we're talking about. What was asked of me was one is the maps themselves, uh, converting and maintaining them, and the other is providing the, um, the access GIS service that we provide to many communities. Um, so they're really, really independent. Uh, of course, you, we can't do the online web service without the first part, but, right. but uh, they don't but, have to be done together. But, but if we brought you a complete up-to-date current file, then you could do the hosting, right? That's correct. <clears throat> if, someone else, so if you had someone else to finish you, the you, you You would do it or somebody else would bring the file. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've gone ahead and opened up a few local sites uh, that we're already uh, have uh, with serving around around you. Uh, Moultonboro, Ossipee, and Wolfboro are all using our mapping and our, our access GIS service. Um, so mm -hmm. I, and I think maybe the Moultonboro site was the original, what originally prompted you to, uh, to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, go to, I, I can go to any one of them and we can start demonstrating what that Access GIS service is. But I don't want to jump, go quickly to that unless, uh, without discussing the mapping itself. Uh, I know that you're looking at a uh, significant transition to what you're used to, what, what your current consultant's been providing. Uh, I, I can just give you a quick summary. Uh, what we would do in the mapping is uh, 
start with the uh, digital parcel data that was developed several years ago by, uh, uh, by for, for the state by uh, uh, T Square, mm -hmm. and uh, that be <clears throat> at least the parcel data, the parcel fabric has been converted. Uh, but it, they didn't convert all of your tax map data, so you can't produce tax maps from the existing <coughs> data. Uh, however, it does give us a, a head start on the conversion process. So what we would propose doing is starting with that, those parcel data, using the most current mylars that you have for your existing uh, manually drafted tax maps, we would convert all the data that are missing from uh, the digital data yeah, and incorporate it into the GIS database. And we would then uh, um, uh, format the data so that we can produce the tax maps just like you're used to seeing them directly out of the GIS. So that you, because going forward with the GIS and, and having to maintain manually drafted maps or, or even not manually drafted maps and having two data sets is not a good uh, idea. Uh, it, it leads to problems in the future. So what we would propose is bring them all into the one data set, update the parcels from the current uh, data in the, in the T-squared data because it is out of date, incorporate all the map data. I've broken down different features of your maps. Uh, the, uh, there's, a, the, there's a conversion cost for the basic typical tax map data and then some additional costs for things like um, you have buildings on your tax maps right now, although I doubt they're current. Uh, you may want those converted, street numbers, uh, um, I don't remember everything, zoning, uh, and zoning which is manually marked up on a set of maps for you right now, uh, as well as uh, current use and things like that. Um, and this is two weeks here that doesn't have any, and um, some of the things her and I talked about too, was she actually suggested maybe we don't even need paper maps anymore, right, Sue? So, and yeah. uh, we kind of talked about that. So it's just something for the selectmen to kind of keep in mind. Like <coughs> people can, can just go online and print if you'd like and save the cost of paper. But just something for you guys to consider. And she talked about leaving some things off the map, like buildings, just because of the congestion. Like, tell me about that. Well, that's, that. that's a good point. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't want to lose sight of that. But one thing I want to just. Just just making them think about it. Yeah, yeah. but one thing, you're, definitely when you convert, and it's particularly if you start using the Access GIS site, you're going to need, at the very least, less copies of the hard copy maps. But in, I, I want to assure everyone that when we convert the data, we'll be able to produce the tax maps just like, well, they won't look manually drafted, but they'll be just like what you had before. Yeah. And that's important. Uh, a lot of companies don't do that. Uh, but if, if you want a successful uh, implementation of GIS in your community, you need to be able to produce and provide those data that people had gotten in the past too, mm -hmm. and not just cut it off and say, no, you can't have that anymore now because we've advanced the technology. Because there are some people who will make the conversion very quickly, mm -hmm. some people who will take a little more time doing it, some people never will make that transition already from the hard copy maps. And if you can't provide what they're used to getting, they're going to be throwing grenades over the fence <laughs> all the time and it's going to lead to problems with advancement of your GIS. So we, we grew up. All we do is provide municipal mapping and GIS services. That's, that's all of our clients. And we've I've seen many cases where communities <clears throat> have very good GIS systems, but it fell down because it couldn't produce what they produced in the past. So whenever we do a conversion, we ensure that you can do that. Well, have you found some towns who no longer want the paper? We have a handful. Um, of towns, I don't. We don't have any in New Hampshire. Oh yeah, we do have one in New Hampshire. We don't deliver hard copy maps to. They may print their own though. I don't know. Right. I, I mean, thinking that my thinking is that um, I give the sets of prints that people want or that are, that we are accustomed to, um, but I also give uh, a zip drive with mm -hmm. everything on it. Mm -hmm. And really, what the town needs is they need an annual timeline. They need the April 1st information that they can go back to mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be on paper. And I, I was assuming that people, once they got used to going online, they come in the town office and they get to look at these and use these, they'll realize how much more information they have than what's on the flat piece of paper. Right. 
So. Yeah, that, that's you're, you're definitely right about that. But there, as I said, there are some people who want that for, tax map. For they, people that that aren't computer literate, mm -hmm. don't know what a computer, have never worked with a computer, it could be extremely daunting. Well, I mean, and if you have having the, a set on the counter like we do now yeah. for somebody to access, and have just, and, and Karen or whoever is there can show them how to mm -hmm. work it. Uh, and, like, four copies and, you know, and they can print copies or you could put something on a zip drive to run to the mailboxes to get printed. You know, and, and to your point, one thing, a significant impact of having everything available digitally and available <coughs> on is, an example is your current use and your zoning. Right. That, that had, because of the, the, the amount of data, it has to be produced in color. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to figure out what the map was saying. Right. Color maps are very expensive to produce, so you can significantly, uh, I mean, uh, this project includes delivery of, um, of hard copies, uh, multiple copies, I think, of, of color uh, maps of those. <clears throat> it may not be necessary, and you can save several hundred dollars, uh, uh, maybe even a thousand dollars, by eliminating just those prints, because, uh, as I say, color maps are just expensive to produce. Yeah, just put them on a zip drive. Yeah. Yep. Have you printed as needed? Right. right. So the proposal, is a, as I said, involves conversion, and then it breaks down some additional things, additional money for different items, and then a whole separate uh, uh, cost for our Access GIS web service that I would w demonstrate to you as much as you'd like today. Um, there is a, a, there's a one-time setup fee included in the proposal for the Access GIS site. Our standard setup fee is $2,500, but if we're doing all of this at once, we can reduce that to uh, $1,500. So it does save you $1,000. If you choose to proceed with the mapping and not the GIS service at this time, you should assume that that $2,500 will be in effect if you choose to do that next year or something, mm -hmm. the following year or whatever it is. Um, one thing I'd like to add, though, for you in section four is, um, you know, I don't know if, I know knows, but Mark Harwood was going to work on updating from the state file to make us more current to save money, but I wanted to let you know, I think it's been in emails with you and I, but they can do it from then to current, it doesn't matter, like there's no cost difference, so meaning Mark wouldn't have to do any late work. Right, when we do the conversion, we'll update all the parcels from your yeah, maps, uh, and if we don't update the parcels, the conversion cost is the same, because it's just so negligible when you're doing all that other conversion work, updating the line work that's already been done, is pretty straightforward. Right, and, and I, let me add to what you said at the beginning. I, I think it would be a waste of money to put the buildings on uh, if you're going to get the the satellite imagery available. Right. They're there, and it's the least accurate thing on the map, and yep. it's the least complete thing. Yep. So it's yeah. So I think I quoted uh, for buildings and street numbers seven hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, you know, you that's. You could you could eliminate that. I agree. Well, I would I don't, why would you it. want to put out of date buildings on your maps? And, I mean, even even when the map was first done, the the buildings were the least accurate because it's done from uh, interpreting aerial photos. Yeah. And what they see for buildings, they see shadows. Mm -hmm. So usually they they're guessing. And in some the cases, actual side of the building. In, in some cases, even when you fly in a in a snowless and leafless condition, sometimes the, you can't even see the building right. anyways. So many, I'm sure, are missing from the right. original project. Well, the map was done 41 years ago by a young lady. <laughs> by a young lady. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, a child. <laughs> 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 and uh, the. The buildings have only been updated if they've been surveyed. So there's a, a lot of construction that's happened. So. so this doesn't marry with the assessor at all? Oh yeah, the, the assessor assessor's. would love this. But as far as the, they're going to have everything, right? Yeah, I can, I'll be able to show you how it actually, well that's what a GIS is. This, uh, is this public access or, or is this just for the town? No, nope. well, we've got this, what we're, what we're going to be looking at is live. You could see it from, from anywhere, your home, your Paris. Um, as long as you have internet access, we're going, now, some of these clients, <coughs> Wolfboro and Moltenboro specifically, both have staff sites as well. Um, 
the, and that gives them functionality as well as <coughs> data that are available to only municipal staff. Uh, and there's different reasons for that, and I can show, I can go to other sites and show you. Oftentimes, uh, uh, well, one thing to think about is this Access GIS site is that it's a, it's really a town-wide solution. It's not for the assessors or for the uh, town clerk. It's really a, a, it can, has benefits to all departments. Um, and um, one of the common one, uh, departments that needs uh, the staff site where they have more um, sensitive data would be emergency services, for example. And I can show you examples of that. And I can go to these staff sites because I'm God in these sites. I can get into any of them. You have, you have the key. I have the key. <laughs> but, uh, but, that, but they didn't start that way. And I, and I haven't proposed staff sites for you. There's no advantage to, to setting up the staff site in advance. It doesn't save you money to do it now. Um, but it's something that we could add later. Exactly. For additional functionality. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And a staff site does not have ongoing additional costs. It just has a one-time fee, 950 bucks to set up. And once everything's set up, I mean, let's say there's a 10-lot subdivision that comes through the planning yeah. board. Is that additional mapping, additional cost, or is that just part of the... Yeah, so, so once this is set up, you think about there's two costs. One is your annual maintenance, just like you've been doing all along, and the other is this service. So there would be a cost for the annual maintenance if we do it or if someone else does it to update that, put that 10 lot subdivision within your data. There's, there's no additional cost once, if we were doing the update, which is the case with 99% of our clients, we're doing all the updating. When we do the update, we push it to the web. Okay, so it's just still part of your maintenance cost. That web service includes updating it with the new data. So you don't pay for that twice, so to speak. Couple of questions. How many communities in New Hampshire currently use your services? Um, Ballpark figure. Uh, I can tell you exactly. Um, oh no, I don't have internet access. A lot. Uh, if I had my computer up, I could, but I, I don't have the list here. We have a total of 285 municipalities under contract for this service. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm thinking there's. Uh, oh, there's. 440-something in Vermont, there's 40-something in Maine. So there's got to be close to 100 in New Hampshire using this service. And how many in the last two years have been added to you? Been added? Yes. Uh, we're adding an, an average of uh, two a month. We've been pretty consistent about that for the last couple of years. So I would say we, in the last two years, we've probably added 40, 40, somewhere in the city of 40 or 50 new clients. And I think you answered this. I asked, was going to ask the neighboring towns that are using it, it's the three towns contiguous to us? Yep, uh, well, there's many, um, there's many more uh, as well, uh, but the three towns contiguous to you, Wolfboro, Ossipee, and... <clears throat> I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, Moultonboro, Ossipee, and Wolfboro. Uh, but we're also in the area, Guilford is using it. Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm losing that's track. Of that, that, that's, that's good. Yeah. The, the next question I have is, is it public information what those towns get charged by you? Um, is this, uh, that's shown on the website? Is that what you're no. asking? Is it public information, for example, what does Wolfboro, Moultonboro, and Aussie pay a year for your service? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is that public information? Yeah, it's public information. So Would you for, the, for this Access GIS service? Yes. yes. They all pay the same price because they're because all the towns, virtually every community in New Hampshire is is below the. This is, is sold on the annual service, based on population. Yes. And every any community under twenty thousand people, uh, it's a flat fee of twenty four hundred dollars for that service. Um, if if are, for the basic service. Yeah. Are there any additional costs? For example, do we have to buy? a piece of equipment to sit in the office. Right, there's no like software costs, no hardware costs. We can we handle all of that. All you need is internet access. Uh, next question is, do you see in the near future the science of the industry uh, changing? Is there a new technology on the horizon yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always changing. Uh, we, that's, we handle that end of it as part of our service. So uh, yeah, the, the, the technology, the, our application, we are an ESRI, uh, Environmental Systems Research Institute, business partner. Mm -hmm. 
um, and our application is built on Esri technology. And Esri's constantly evolving their technology and we're constantly keeping up with that, with that evolution. So um, I can't say specifically in the next five years what it's going to be or how it's going right. to, but I, I'm just not smart enough. But uh, I can assure you that we've been keeping up all along and we would continue to do that and that's not part of the, the, the town doesn't bear the costs of that. Uh, you answered, you folks answered the question about structures. So. Okay. Um, my thought is, and I'm not a computer geek, is go to Google and... Yeah, and, and I'll show you, it's, it's built right into this site. Uh, so you'll uh, be able to go right to the Google. What does GIS stand for? Yeah, <laughs> I guess I jumped the gun. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. Okay. And in simple terms, geogra is simply linking tabular data, which is typically your, uh, in your case, avatar you're mm -hmm. using, your avatar database, to the maps the graphic database, thereby making them intelligent. So that map 15, lot 47 knows that it's map 15, lot 47, and knows what else is around it, and knows everything that's related to it. And I'll be able to update up that, up that as I do these. Yes, as you, you continue to maintain, this service includes you maintaining your avatar data like right. you always have, and you, you run a data processor, and it, and it updates the web with the new information you've added. Which is nice. And you'd have complete control over that. We don't even know what happened. Well, we do indirectly know what happens. I can show you how, but we don't, we don't have anything. The only thing you would rely on us or someone like us for still is updating the parcel data itself, putting the 10 lot subdivision in. Mm -hmm. um, another question is, is there a timeline conflict? And I'll give you an example. Many of the things that we as selectmen do when it comes to setting the tax rate and the budget time, you know, there's the Bay of funding there. You go to call DRA, and mm -hmm. they got four calls in front of you type things. So, is there any service that you provide that? Do you understand my question? No, I don't think I do. Um, when you update our our maps, mm -hmm. do we have to stand in line with someone, someone else? <clears throat> well, I see. You mean the timeliness of getting your yes. updates done? Okay. We guarantee uh, that once we receive your final data for the year, that is through March 31st of each year, because you want, typically New Hampshire towns want their, their, property, their properties updated to April 1 of each year. Mm -hmm. So once we've received the final data through March 31st from you to do the update, within 45 days, you've got your update done and we've got it up to the web. Now that relies some on, on local staff. First of all, we've got to get the data <coughs> from you or receive the data from you. Secondly, when we do the update, before we finalize everything, we send a set of PDFs for review. And we ask you to review them and let us know, everything will look okay to you? Yes, we'll finish the update. If you don't respond, it's 30 days, we, after 30 days, we just finalize it. So we're just gonna go forward. And finally, the last question. Is there anything that it doesn't do yeah, it doesn't spit. It doesn't spit dollar bills out for you or anything like that. For example, all of these communities have there been a number of communities that wanted to do X and just don't have the technology to do it. There's always some little things that they'd like to see happen that aren't built yet. Uh, so the question becomes: Is it worth building this tool? If we do, is it just going public or? Do we, or is it a, a fee associated with that? So I can't say there's anything it can't do uh, that I can think of off the top of my head that we've been asked. There are some things we've been asked for that it doesn't do yet. One example is just last week is uh, in one of the meetings, the uh, road agent for a client, Weathersfield, Vermont, wanted to be able to, because he's doing a lot of reporting for FEMA right now for some stuff that happened. Um, he wanted to be able to, uh, overlay topo data, but beyond just looking at the topo, he wanted to be able to calculate slope. There's no calculate slope tool on this site right now. But boy, it's a cool tool. When he, he brought it, it's the first person who's asked for something like that. Excellent. That goes on the list, and we decide, okay, how are we gonna fit building this, building this tool into it? So new tools get added. That's exactly, large part from that's exactly what I was asking. So. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. May I ask a question? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Um, now, it, it's been a couple of years since I've been looking at the Wolf Girl site, but my recollection is 
you see a picture of a house, and then you see the tax information. So Sue, when you're talking about eliminating buildings, is that what you're talking about? No. Okay, what are you? I'm talking about this, this has layers. You can look at a layer just like he's showing right here, which is the, uh, the terrain, I'll say. It's, it's showing you some elevation uh -huh. uh, and the roads and the water features. Okay. And you go to another layer <coughs> that shows a lot more. <coughs> and you, you enlarge it. You keep clicking and enlarging it. Okay. And you see the parcel. Then you click on the parcel. You click on that parcel and you get this that he's showing you now that shows you the house. And then you can go and you can pick different views. You can look at the satellite view. You can zoom in on that. You can see the house. Okay, so. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so you're saying there is a layer that shows buildings, but you're saying they're just kind of shadows. No, they're uh, satellite imagery, just like but on you, Google but Maps. But the satellite imagery already does that. That's yes, what that's saying. what I'm saying. She's saying not put them, don't you put them on the PDF. You see the building right? there on that? Yeah. So she's talking about the PDF. Right. So, so I'm talking about when, when the... Oh, just the hard copy. Oh, no. Oh, oh, she oh, PDF. Yeah. I'm talking about the line, the layer that shows property lines only <clears throat> doesn't need to show the buildings because the buildings are available on this other layer. On this other layer. Okay. okay. So when you print a tax map, it's not going to be that for printing. It's going to be... What we what, what we're seeing now for a tax map, just boundaries and right. yeah, so, the <clears throat> right. So so we you, as I said, we will be delivering tax maps to you and PDFs of the tax maps. So you can actually print a tax map still, mm -hmm. but on the website, you not don't think in terms of maps. You think in terms of parcels, right? So you aren't limited by two maps, a parcel going on two maps. There's no such thing as a map limit here because it's one composite. For all I know, this is an intersection of four maps on, that we're looking at right now. Right, and you can print that from your screen. Mm -hmm. It sounds like I ought to start showing you this you stuff. You should. So we can <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, why don't you just jump into the demo, show us some of this stuff, and that'll probably generate some more. Sounds good. Uh, does, does, anybody, does anybody want me to care which site I go to? Or? No. Okay, so let's just start with Wolf Hurl. I mean, Molten Hurl. Um, okay, so when we go from site to site, you'll see they all look the same, right? I mean, it's just different data. Uh, over here is where you interact and, and search for parcels and interact with the, with the graphic data. And there's tools up here where you, uh, that I'll go through to show you zooming in and, and adding layers and base maps. So what's typical? I mean, you finding a parcel. When you search for a parcel, you can search. It'll search simultaneously by owner's name, address, and map and law. So I can start, you just start typing and it's gonna be searching and the more you type, the more you, the search results reduce. <laughs> we wanna go to, I normally go Smith because I know I'll find a Smith. And we're, by the way, we're live. So when we, I run the risk of always doing a live demo, <laughs> what we're gonna run what we're gonna find. But let's just say, okay, this is the Smith. So you see everything, all the Smiths, this is Smith Road. This is Andrea Smith. I can sort these by map and lot number. I can sort them by owner. I can sort them by address. But um, let's just say this is what I was looking for. Uh, no, that's a condo unit. Let's go here. This is what I was looking for. They're all condo units for crying out loud. Uh, no, I think the way they have, with the way Mulper has their data, uh, they just everything is units. Oh, it's not a handout. Okay, so that's, it zooms right to the parcel. And of course, depending on the size of the parcel, it, it, it determines the zoom threshold. So the dialog box opens up, and you see they've got a lot of documents linked. Different towns will have different things. So they've got their building photos. They've got the plans, too. This is a survey of the property that was used to put the map together. Okay. Um, they've also got a vision property card. That's the actual property card. Uh, they use vision <laughs> rather than avatar. I can show you. Uh, uh, I think Wolfboro uses avatar. I can show you that. I think they do. Yeah. Um, and they also have all the assessment data. 
This is coming directly out of their uh, camera. Um, and you show, when we set the site up, we, whoever, whomever we're working with, our, our, uh, our uh, staff will, will work with which, which fields you want to show. Most towns just do everything. It's all public information. They put everything out there. But you can pick and choose which fields you want to show. Now, on this layer, these buildings, are they from the original Moulton Borough tax maps, or are they from the uh, satellite? Yeah, so these buildings here are, show, are from the, we, when we did Moulton Borough, we did a new mapping project, new flight, new planimetrics. So these buildings are from planimetrics. They have since been updated from the original mapping on an annual basis with the, the buildings. The way we do building updates, the client provides us with uh, sketches from their uh, uh, CAMA database <coughs> of every new building or, or addition, ones with additions. They provide us those sketches, and then we use the imagery. Once the imagery catches up, we use the imagery to place that building and, sketch and put it in. So if we don't have you do buildings, then it wouldn't show on this layer. That's correct. And it would I can just go be in and show the you the boundaries and the roads and the water. But if you go it to the... It would be just like that. Yeah. And so if you go to the, you go to the satellite, Yep. Uh, imagery to see the building. That's where you'd see the building. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I ask a question again? So those individual pictures of buildings. They're still there. That's from the tax yeah, that's, that's from the Those are already there and yeah. they would update them. Exactly. Yes. They're coming. That's coming. Those, the fo building photographs, as I, uh, the way I'll refer to them to differentiate between mm -hmm. the yeah, aerial imagery. Yeah, okay. Those photographs are coming directly out of the CAMA database. So right. if you update those photos, then that's what will be From shown. From the assessor. Mm -hmm. The assessor. Okay. Okay. Right. okay, so that's really simple. You can search for a parcel. That's very obviously a very common um, uh, tool. Um, before I leave this search tool, I want to show you that there's also a... So, Sorry, go ahead. Can you go back to the place you just was? Yeah, I'm going to assume you use these tools. Okay, on the on the left where it was listing the, uh, you took out buildings from our checklist. Oh, yes, the layers? Yeah. Okay, it says, uh, no, go down to the bottom. It says soils, and I'm not, yeah. Soil. Soil, soil. okay, that was not checked, I see. Right, so you that's, I'll get to that, but you can control, you can turn, uh, you know, all these layers on and off as necessary. So these are the tax map layers right here, the property map, mm -hmm. but all these other layers, <laughs> if, they, if they're available in your, for your community, they're included in the site. We'll, add, we'll keep whatever layers there you want. And you'll see, for example, Wolfboro has much fewer, many fewer layers mm -hmm. than Moultonboro has right now. But I can turn on the FEMA data, and I can see how must be a cliffside there or something. So there you see FEMA data. Mm -hmm. You can turn on FEMA layers, you can turn on the soils layers. Yeah, thanks. And it's point and click, and it's important to understand when we build this, this is typically intended to be open to the public uh, because it helps reduce traffic here, better serves the public, and le less interruptions for your staff. Um, so it can't be complicated. Uh, it doesn't do you any good if someone's calling up and saying, hey, how do I? Um, so we, this is a very, uh, you know, couple of clicks to get to anything if we try to keep it as simple as possible. Okay. So let's go back and say uh, I've selected this parcel. Zoom in. Another uh, tool I wanted to show you is this. Uh, oh, let's, I don't want to select. Let me go back to find a spot that's, that this will work. In. I 
along with searching by address, name, and parcel number, you can also do a geographic search. So let's just say for talk's sake, I wanted everybody along this road right here. So I can activate this tool. It'll draw on the map. I can draw a polygon around here. And now it's going to select everything that I just <coughs> intersected with. Okay. Why is that valuable? Well, for one, if I want everybody on a road for one reason or another, we're going to notify them of something. Um, you can look up by address, but those that are on the corner may have an address on the abutting road, so you might miss them. So that's why you might want to use a geographic tool to, to make that selection. But again, you get this list and report. Okay. So let me now zoom in and show you other, other tools. So I select that one. And by the way, we're still all in the public, uh, <coughs> the public uh, site. Um, I want to do an abutters list. And the butter here is direct butters usually, or and across the street. Okay, so you could use uh, a distance, say 100 feet, because you know you get across the street. The problem is in this case. Let me zoom in a little tighter. If I used 100 feet, I would also get this one down here because it's only 75 feet away. So what, the way we prefer to use this tool is if you want direct to butters, you use zero. Now that's only going to get me, well, it gets the road. Well, I can get rid of that too. So that doesn't get me across the road, right? But this, that's what this add remove tool is for, okay? So now I want to take this, let's remove that road. It's a private road, that's why it's selected. I need to add this one, I need to add this one, I need to add this one. So now I've got all the parcels that would be on that abutters list. I get a PDF report in seconds, shows me the subject parcel with all the abutters. I get a, I can, I can export to that to Excel so I can manipulate it if I need to. And mailing labels. And I can say, look, uh, I've got a sheet that's already been started, I wanted to start printing there. And now it's printed my mailing labels as well. Okay, very quick, very easy, a butters report. <coughs> move on. I already showed you layers. We will already turn some on and off. But one thing I want to show you is uh, you see as I open, as I zoom in and out on this, different data come up. And those are zoom thresholds we set that if you're zoomed at this point, now the tax map data is going to come up, okay? If I zoomed out here, it's not because it'll get too crowded. These numbers are dynamically labeled. You can't, you can't see if you zoom out too far. Problem is finding a zoom threshold that everybody's happy with is impossible. So the way we resolve that is we created this layer that says tax map text visible at all scales. So now I can turn that on and I can have the tax map text. I said I can have the text. There it is. I can have the tax map text there. Um, so when I zoom in at a different level, you'll see it'll always remain. Even if you can't really read it. Okay? But you're going to find some points where it's still kind of legible. I still want it on. Okay? The other thing I want to show you here, you notice the parcel lines, 2018. So these, these, map, these map, the map data here are current to full 1 of 18. We've already done the update and uploaded it. Also, this I here, if I hover over it, if I hover over it, instead of I hover over it. So the last time they ran, remember I said there's a data processor. So when you enter the data into Avatar, you run the data processor and update the owner's names. They, last time they ran it was, in, was August 16th. Um, so you know how current the ownership information is. And that's valuable to maybe your planning board is using the data and they want to make sure they've got the most current data for the butters and all that stuff. They may look at that and they say, hey, would you please run the data processor just because we want the most current, just in case we want to have the most current information up there. Uh, and for the public to see that, obviously. Um, so it looks like they're about due. They probably do it once a month when they process their deeds. 
All right. So there's all kinds of layers you can turn on and off, and I, I can show you more of those things, but it's just we've already seen turning the different data on. Um, there's drawing tools. Uh, oops. Very simple to use. I'm trying to find a point where I might use it. Now well, I'll just pick. I'll make one up. So I can say here, I want to create a point. I want to make it red. And I want to put it right here. <coughs> and I want to add some text. And I want to put it right here. <coughs> I'm going to say. Uh, Clogged <coughs> culvert. Of course, I got to spell clogged right. Mm -hmm. that matters. And I want to put an oops. I want to put an arrow there. And now I want to print this map to PDF and email it to my road agent, so we know someone noticed that and we go out and maybe clean out the, the culvert. Easy to use communication tool, drawing tool. One of our clients had their some centennial. I don't remember what it was. They actually used this to create a, a parade route, uh, label some points along it, <coughs> created the map, and posted it on their website so that the general public knew what the parade route was that was going on. So it's a good tool also to turn on the imagery. If we were to find it's going to be hard to find because we're just such good at map, good mappers. Mm -hmm. But someone may come in now that you can see the imagery in the background. Let's just make something up here. Someone may come in and say, hey, wait a second. Now, this is all surveyed, so it's not realistic. But someone can look at this and say, hold on a second. That's not how my property line goes. I can, my property line is way on this side of these trees here or something like that. More eyes seeing the data means more feedback on making corrections, means maps getting better all the time. We love that. Mm -hmm. Fixing that is part of your annual maintenance service. It's, it's included with reading your deeds and with plotting your plans. And any problems that come up throughout the year, it's all part of that service that we would deal with and fix uh, for you. Um, so this becomes a very um, a good tool for helping improve your mapping. Here's a good example. That's probably not <coughs> accurate. It's not likely that their driveway goes onto the next parcel. Oh. I won't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happens more often than. Uh, well, yeah, in some right. in some cases, but these look pretty new. <laughs> these yeah. these uh, buildings, and, uh, and and guess what? I can look at this. I can say, I wonder, is that supposed to be like that? Well, let me see. I got that. Oops. I want to go to documents and links. Let's look at the plan. Does that show the building, the driveway? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't. But anyway, so you get more data available to your review. Yeah, go ahead. Could you have a layer uh, that would be useful, especially for the Conservation Commission, to show what land is in conservation? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I have a layer for you. <laughs> for Steve. <laughs> um, if we, is it on? Is it on the got current use. They got current use, so the similar. Um, so if I, they had us actually go through and map their current use. So it's not just the parcels that are in current use. They wanted to see what the limits of that current use is. So I got to zoom out to find them now. So let me zoom in here, and you can see that we have mapped these areas. So this shows the portion that's in current use, and of course the portion that's not, with around the buildings. Okay, so um, we can create layers and map any layers you want. Sometimes we have clients that just have a symbol, you know, conservation easement CE. And there's a conservation easement on that parcel, or, or whatever the case may be. But you can go to the to the granular level of actually mapping out those easements as well. If you have them mapped on the maps already, then we will, the conversion will capture that. Right, and we have the types of current use. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I, so I'm remembering have, now. The yeah. different colors for everyone. Yeah, yeah. All different colors. that's right. So th we, it would be similar to this, only there would be different color cross hatching, so you know what the 
what the, the uh, current So when you is. charge $2,500, um, does that come with a set number of layers? And you uh, well, the 20, the, you, you mean the annual fee of $2,400 or the setup fee? The setup fee. Okay, the setup fee, if we do it all at once with the mapping conversion, is will only be $1,500. And the answer is no. In either case, there's no limit on the layers. So that's pretty easy for you to do. As long as the layers exist. So oh, in this you case, have the data. right. So so we the data, them the data. Yeah. those data are part of the conversion quote. Okay. But if you have another layer somewhere, um, hydrants. Uh, I don't know. Uh, right, right. If you have another layer, as long as long as it's already <coughs> digital format, we'll add it, and there's no additional. So, so the fire department could ask for that. We have a culvert survey. Yeah. So oh. we can plug that in. That's right. As long as the maps, are the digital data. Um, yeah. And we can create digital data where there's a fire pond, so that's what we exactly. have. Exactly. Yeah. Paid study that's probably mm -hmm. yep. digital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think if we go, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna log into the Molten Borough site, and I'll show you they've got a couple of those. One, two, three, four. Is it <laughs> Password. <laughs> I think the Planning Commission, when they do those studies, they use GPS to locate the culverts and everything. Right. So Perfect. yeah, those, yes. yeah. those right. could be dropped yeah. right in. Exactly, so the only time, if you didn't have the data already in some digital format, and you wanted us to go out and collect it, of course there'd be a fee for that. But if the data already exists, or someone creates a data in the middle, the uh, data set in the middle of the year, and you want them added, that's there's no additional cost to it. Uh, back up. When we update your maps annually, there's no additional cost to, no additional cost to add those layers then. If you're in the middle of the year, you just can't wait for have this layer added, oh, okay. then there's a one-time flat fee of 250 bucks. Yeah. Whether it's one layer or 10 layers, it's not 10 times 250, it's 250 bucks for whatever layers you want us to add. If you wait for the next update, there's no fee. Yeah, the phone is up to red bell. Yeah, so that's a good thing I wanted to show you. So whenever we create new functionality, this will come on. So the system knows that this computer hasn't been to this site since we've released that. Oh, yeah. So if you click on it, it label parcel. Using the label tool, click on a parcel to label it with owner name, address, camera ID. Okay? And then there's a little video <coughs> showing that will show you a demo on it. Okay? Um, so, and then when you, if I go away, turn that off, you see it goes away. So next time we release some tool, now we're on the staff site here now, so that's a new tool on the staff site available to everyone. If it's a if it's a public a new public tool, like say we do that that uh, slope tool and we put it on the public access, then that red, red bell will be ringing because you haven't been there since we released that tool. Okay, that's how we notify users that there's some new functionality. So one thing I wanted to show you about this too is that I showed, I showed you the drawing, a little bit of the drawing tools, but there's also measure tools, point and click measure tools. So now I want to calculate how much of this parcel is in current use. I'm not going to be real careful about this, but it's very simple. Go around. You see I'm not lining it up perfectly. that's oh sorry I just did distance <laughs> let me clear that there's an area calculation tool I want to do it in it I want to do it in acres I can do it square feet I can do it in hectares if you want <laughs> but anyways so I can quickly go around and calculate how much of that parcel is in use, 9.8 acres. Okay. That's a very valuable tool uh, also when you have discrepancies. Mr. Smith comes in and says, I don't have 15 acres, here's my deed, I have 20 acres. Well, sometimes a good thing to do quickly is say, okay, let's just calculate it first and see what it calculates to. I can use that tool to see um, you know, your, your record, you know, or a discrepancy between your records and the map, and see which one's accurate. Um, 
so it helps solve those types of problems. So if you calculate it and it says, and it comes to 15 acres, then you can say to Mr. Smith, well, look, that's an act. I, I understand your deed says that, but as plotted, it's 15 acres. You need to show me where the lines are wrong. And that's where this comes in handy. Then you can go around and say, no, I think those lines are right. That's, that's, that looks like my property. Well, if that's the case, then it's 15 acres, not 20 acres. Okay? So it's a, a, a valuable tool to deal with questions and problems. Um, so I logged into the Moultonboro site because I wanted to show you, see now there's staff. All these layers are available to staff, not to the public. Okay? Part of that is because they, they acquired 911 data from the state. The state does not allow does not allow redistribution of those data. But they needed it for their internal purposes. They released it to the Board of Selectmen and, the, and they chose to put it on a staff protected site for their internal use. They also have their snow plow routes there. Um, I think they have, yeah, their RSMS. Um, Road surface management. Yeah, that's the survey that we're doing now, right? Yeah, so they added that layer in, and you can see what these different colors mean on the RSMS. So all of these things you do, all of these projects you do, can be mapped and can be have value and easily accessible. Um, these are the tools that are available to staff. Just, these are standard staff tools. So you can run reports like how, what records are in my avatar database that are not linking to my maps for some one reason or another and, and clean up those link errors, things like that. Also, well, I'm not, I didn't propose a staff site, so I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too into the weeds there unless you have specific questions about it. Um, share, um, okay, so we've been turning on and off base maps. All of these ESRI base maps, because we're an ESRI business partner, come along for the ride. So you've got ESRI imagery, and it gives you a little information, fetching imagery date. So that imagery is from April of 16. Okay. Local imagery is really the state imagery, and you've got 2006, 2006, 2010, 15, and as they do more imagery, we just keep adding those layers for you. Sharing. This is a great tool. Uh, I'm sorry, let me go to areas of interest first. Different towns have different areas of interest. Moultonboro only has a couple, so they want to quickly go to the Lake Kenasatka. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so you don't have to search for it every time. You know, um, the town offices. Also, sharing so i'm looking at this and i want another person to see exactly what i'm looking at so i copy this i paste that into an email i send it to them i won't do it here because it's on my computer but I, I send it to to the other person they click on that link and it opens the site and with exactly what i'm looking at here the same layers the same lim map limits so now you know you're everybody's looking at the exact same thing This eye tool, I've been clicking on and off. You can see as I hover over par parcels. So now, as I hover over, I don't have to click and open each side, I can see who owns different aspects, different parcels around there. Okay. Um, trash, zoom in and zoom out. Zoom to my location. That's probably not a lot of use sitting here on the, in this office at a laptop. That certainly wouldn't be sitting in um, Tuftonboro in the Moultonboro site. But the real value of that is this, uh, this application runs on your mobile device. Okay, so um, for example, uh, I was telling you about the, the staff site and having uh, data. Let me just show you. In, uh, oh, 
Wayland Mass. Their um, police and fire departments went out. Oh, by the way, some sites you'll see have this splash screen come on and they have different language, whatever they want. Some just go straight to the site. We can set it up however you want. Um, so in Wayland's case, I'm going to go to their, they've got a ton of areas of interest, okay? Uh, I'm going to go to Happy Hollow School. So as I ID Happy Hollow School, you're going to see property card. Okay, that's all they've got linked there. I'm gonna zoom, I'm gonna log in. And now when I ID that property, you're gonna see floor plans. So their police and fire went out and collected, you know, either either acquired or they already had scanned floor plans, and it's all part of their emergency response in a you know a school shooting or something like that, a fire. Yeah. So they went around town to all of their public buildings and made that part of their emergency response. I don't know what these. Uh, I'm sure you know what these things mean inside A, B, C, and D, but it's part of their plan, anyways, uh, and that's available to them on their mobile device out in the field. So they have all this information available to them. Obviously, you only want that on a, on a uh, public site. Right, you, need a, right. you want a staff site for that. Now, they also have a document upload tool, which is not part of what we're talking about yet. But that tool allows you to scan and link any image you want onto the site. You want that on a staff site. You, you don't want the public to be able to do that. <laughs> you can imagine what would end up getting linked on those parcels if the public could do it. But, um, so you, uh, so there's, this, this application grows as your needs grow. Um, okay, so I jumped to, sorry, do you have a question? No, no, um, good. Um, oh, I wanted to show Wolfboro because, to give you, they use Avatar. So they've got their Avatar property cards linked. So we have a property record report that, that comes with the system, but it's just a, a you know a canned report. They wanted to make sure that the public on, online got exactly what they would get if they came in. So that's why they, they, they uh, I think Avatar offers uh, a batch printing utility. Uh, there's a one-time fee for that. And uh, once you have that, you can batch all your PDFs of your, of your property record cards, and then we link them up. There's no additional cost for that. We'll link up new property record cards for you once a year annually at no additional cost. If you want to be able to do that ad hoc, we can build, uh, which we've done for Wolfboro, a batch upload utility. One time fee, build that utility, then you can update them whenever you want and we aren't even involved. Going down, so the zoom to my location, well, that's what I was just talking about earlier. If you click on it, it takes you, it brings you to where you are. I don't know where it will bring us. Yeah, it's pretty good, oh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. <coughs> Sorry, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Yeah. I have several. Okay. Uh, and I may be jumping to the point. This is a lot of information, and it's almost like information overload. Uh, the first one is, does a demo of this program exist on your website so someone could review it? No. no. It's a good question because I've asked the same question to my staff. Okay. So the next thing, does your company provide a class to go to for the program? Or, and is there a cost with it? Or you just provide an instruction manual? Yeah, I can show you the instruction manual. We, we will typically, when we install a, a site for our new client, we will come, we are willing to come at no additional cost and with the various department heads, we try to get everybody there and go through the site and show them all the tools that are there, but not to the general public. However, I can show you down here this help tool. Okay. There's a very, you can go through the, a feature tool, it, it, it takes you through each step, right? 
And if it doesn't help me and I don't understand, can I call you? Uh, you can, absolutely, but there's also a documentation. So that produces a PDF that's interactive. So I, wanna, I can't remember how to do in a butters list. I click on that, goes through the instructions with, pic, with you know, pictures and stuff to show how to do it, each of the things. So those are very um, effective tools. We do have people call from time to time for how do I do this or I can't do that, or communicate with a question directly through the site with feedback. Is there a service charge for that? No. Okay. Uh, anything special to run that program, like Adobe Flash? Nope. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Okay. Can I just say that, you know, Wolfboro has this. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of towns have it. Yeah. So you can go just on, on the internet and plug in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, go to the town website, click on the tax maps, open it up, and start playing with it. And you'll see it's really, this is, well, really this is the first useful. time. You are involved in it, so you know all about this. Well, I know. Well, yeah, okay, but that's well. how I, I figured it out myself. Nobody has given me a tutorial, and I'm not really a computer person. Well, if somebody watches this on TV, on this, this tape, they may have a lot of questions, oh, too, yeah. if they're interested. So they can call Susan Weeks. <laughs> Should be a problem. Well, you certainly can co can contact us, but I would encourage anybody to just go to the si different sites and you can't break it. Just play with it. Uh, it's point and click. There's, there's nothing. You know, it's, we we uh, uh, we work really hard to make it pretty intuitive. Does our assessor know all about this? Habitat. Oh yeah, we've linked. Well, we've linked. We work with them to link data often. So okay. Um, yeah, they're they're well aware of this. this Thank you. Um, I don't want to waste a lot of your, more of your time. I'm sure you're busy, but I do want to show you one more thing. Uh, uh, or, and I'm happy to show you even more. But we built in people who have used, uh, ever used Google Street View? Mm -hmm. We built this tool here. We built it right in so you don't have to go to a separate site. So now it opens up a window. And it's, see that blue arrow? And it's showing where I am. And as I move up, or in this case down the road, it's showing me where I'm moving to. It also is showing, as I turn, it's showing the direction I'm looking. It's built right into the site, so you don't have to go to open up another another site to, to get to that. We also have bird's eye, oblique imagery, but I, there's probably not any available. I don't know. Yeah, there's, that, that's really available most in more urban areas where you can see and, and go around. Site. What operating system do I need to, to watch that? Windows 10? No, nope. you can be. All you need is that internet access. Doesn't matter what you're running. Okay. And the last thing I want to show you, uh, I want to. The last thing I want to make sure I show you without uh, missing it here, is. Let me turn this on. I turned on zoning. I'm going to turn off the imagery just because it muddies the waters. Okay, so now I'm looking at zoning data, right? I can drill down and see what the various colors mean, okay? And what the overlay hashes mean. But I also wanted to show you that if I go to print, when I print this map, I can just print a quick and dirty map, okay? Just what I'm looking at on the screen. I can also go in and I say, okay, I wanna do a portrait. I wanna leave it eight and a half by 11. Let's make it an even 500 feet to the inch. Uh, I can put in whatever map title I want. And I want to show the legend. So now I print the map. And what it's going to do, it's going to set up a professional looking map that you can include either. Oh, yeah. huh. Let's see if it's a site. Let's try this one. See what I mean about the uh, live demo stuff? I'm going to do the same thing because I want to make sure I have a legend. I'm going to do 500 again because I did there. I have a legend.
takes a minute because it's building the map with a border legend. It's a big map. There we go. So now you see it has the title I blew in there, scale bar. It also has groundwater protection areas. It tells you what those colors and lines all mean. Mm -hmm. So the legend comes through, and it's only showing what's on the map. So it's not showing all of the legend of the zoning, only what's on the map you've got. <clears throat> or as I said, you can just do a quick and dirty map. It'll print quicker if you don't ask for the legend. Other than here, let me try this again. And there's something going on in Wolfboro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have to look into that. <laughs> any, any more questions for Franco? All right. Good. Any questions come up? Don't hesitate to reach out. I just gave you my card. Feel free to call. And we'll take a few. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your time. I appreciate it. It's a whole other world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, see, you see why I say, what do you need paper for? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, the answer, the reason we need paper is because there are people that there's no way they can interface well, with that. Well, there are larger reasons. You need paper because this operating system is going to go antique in our lifetime. So you always need some sort of paper backup. Paper doesn't get that. Well, you need, you need some sort of backup. That's once yeah. a year for your uh, tax map data. All right. Yeah, on, on that subject, I don't want to lose sight of it. When we do your updating, the town owns all data, and we will deliver a, an updated copy of your data every every year, digital copy. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Travel safe. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So while we're waiting for. Thanks. Chief Thompson. Yes, he's on inspection call, so Chief Shigori. Yep. All right. Let's. Uh... I do have his write up if you'd like, Chief Thompson. Yep. Uh, signature file. We have a, a uh, letter of thanks that we talked about for yep. Officer Cook. All right. Hi, Chief. Hey. Hi there. How are you? Good. So we have with you uh, further review on the budget. Uh, there was some question about the numbers after our last meeting and <coughs> So what we've gotten is, is reflected in the handwritten notes. You got this as well. I do not have that. You can use mine if you like. Have you never received that? Oh, okay. Right. Were you ever in the middle of Huh? Mm -hmm. How did this change? Was it just the payroll that changed? You folks did uh, payroll and you changed, was it, um, I don't have to look at it. You changed two numbers. Was it overtime or on call? On, on call, call, right? And then, and then when you voted on a grand total, it didn't match. So we had to just have you right. make an edit. But Selectman Wood also did a spreadsheet. And it seems like right. it might, I don't There's know. There's a problem with it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the fifty thousand doesn't work for that price, that salary. Okay, so that's still wrong. No, that's not wrong. It's what we voted on. Right. Well, it's what you voted on. Right? I, I, I guess to say it's not what. Well, the problem is it was sixteen one, which is twenty five seventeen. It doesn't work out to fifty thousand. We said it fifty thousand, but that's not the twenty five seventeen an hour that was. I, filled up. I watched the tape. What I said is, it's going to be some time before the new officer is on. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's round it off to 50,000. And the last thing that was discussed by us when we voted on it is. Well, what did the chief want to do? 
That was your uh, preferred number. It should be in that. Um, Whatever number you want. I'm just telling you, it's not 16-1. Zero. It's not 16-1. It doesn't add up because it's 53 weeks, so it's not 25, 17 an hour. It's right. on department head request. I think it was 58. Got to be like 20. It's in the department. It's gonna be around 23.50 an hour. The last thing that we did is when we voted on it was that if for some reason it needs to be readjusted on down the road before the final hearing, we'd be glad to do it then. Well, can I see it? A little more accurate. In, so my, in, a, in right. my notes, I put 50,000 with an asterisk. All right. I'm still getting lost in the numbers here in, in terms of where where it fits okay. into what line. We're on the third All right. line down. On the yeah. Office or I see. Notes. Okay. So it's going to be under your salary level. Two, yeah. Police officer salaries. Yeah. So two twenty five forty three is the. Two thirty three thirty eight was your request. So is that the nine thousand eight hundred dollars difference no well i took the salary level shown 16 one yeah and multiplied that out by the 53 weeks 40 hours okay and that works out to 53 360. but I, the original thing was at a higher level because that's where i presented it as right. as if we had not had a change mm -hmm. Yes, what you did is, in your original budget, MPO2 was at the officer's rate that just left. Right. Okay. And that wasn't 16-1. Right. I guess my point is, 16-1 doesn't get us that number. It's one of those two has to change. That's all I'm saying. What I did is, I changed it to 16-1. No. I'm sorry, I changed the entry level to 16-1, mm -hmm. and then I rounded off that new officer's position to $50,000. And the argument was, we're not going to have an officer aboard, correct? January well, we, January hope, January we first hope to up. have it. We yeah. hope to have an officer yeah. aboard. We're only talking we hope to have $3,300. Right, so let, I'd say let's, put the, let's go the full year at the 16-1. So 53,360. And, and uh, uh, you're, you're still targeting getting somebody hired in time to get them into this yes, class, right? Yes, I sent right? out like about 60 emails to people who just passed the test. I've right. three or four coming Saturday for all boards, so. Okay. Um, that's where I'm, I mean, it can be 50,000, but then we're talking, a little, it's not gonna be 16 one, it's like Right. It's not, right. one of the two has to change. So I move we change it to fifty three thousand three sixty for that subline. MPO okay. two. Sixteen one. And that would put the total budget a second then, I'm sorry. Yep. And and where does that take us on the four forty eight two sixty three for the total That's budget? Right. Four four eight two six three. I'll make that part of my motion, sir. Okay. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. So when will you be getting back to us with a report on this proposal? Because we should be in the meeting our next meeting. We're talking about our next meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. We're, we're going to, it's going to be on our agenda uh, on the 29th. Okay. okay. So between now and then, I'll have something to do. Uh, we would like you to review it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to try and take some time and look through it, uh, and it, it, as a group, we'll sit and, and I, I flip through it while I was waiting. Yep. And um, I recognized a couple other projects in there, mm -hmm. uh, Atkinson and Raymond, in particular. I know I talked to the Atkinson chief, who has since retired, but and the Raymond chief. I can sort of get a hold of him. Uh, I think they're both pretty positive on the experience they had. So with with Harriman. Well, they didn't give me the, I don't recall them giving me the name, but they had pretty positive experience. That's okay. All right. 
I'll well, definitely check those. I think we, we all want to make sure that what's included in the proposal is what we ask for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, um, it's consistent with I did notice the their timeline was a little more, I think, aggressive than we had expected because we were talking about being prepared for 2020. Yep. Their timeline ended in like as if we we're going to put something on for next year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's. I, I think we need a little more public input than that. Yeah. No, no, no. I think yep. five meetings discussing it. I, they had red dots for public meetings. That's what they did. Yeah. All right. They had red dots in there timeline so I'll look at it and status of part-time officers uh, don't have anybody that's put in for it so have you contacted anyone um, no I haven't contacted anybody I know a town not far from here has a sergeant leave they hired a part-timer <coughs> for 32 hours a week. Does that make sense? It makes sense if somebody, I put ads out, I put feelers out, if somebody, I mean, it's not, I haven't been secret, I've been looking for help, so if somebody, oh, so they, so moved. So the people, the names that I gave you, they have to come in and see you, rather than you Well, pick up I mean, I talked to one of them, and he didn't, he knew I was looking for help, and he hadn't said anything, I didn't know he was interested until you said something. Yep. I mean, I've had a conversation with him that I need looking for help. So, if he was interested, I think he would have said something then. Okay. So, I, I, I mean, certainly I'm not averse to talking to them, but I mean, it's also been, I've also been pretty busy with stuff. But I'll, and I don't feel comfortable talking to them while they're at their regular job. If you will, I don't think that's that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, so, I got to find when they're off duty and in the right when I have time to, but I don't, I find it kind of surprising if they came to you that they wouldn't come to me, especially both of them know we're short, so. Well, it was friends of theirs that Oh, okay, to. all right, got it. So what else is going on? Uh, well. suspicious activity and alarms. Yeah. And the alarms are fire alarms or burglar alarms. Burglar alarms? Yeah. <coughs> but no no uh, burglary happening. No, it's possible it's uh, you know a couple things. Maybe the motion detectors, uh, I think almost every one of them is internal without a door going off, so it's nice. probably either like uh, something that's moving in the house, like maybe a spider web, or it could be critters. Or squirrels. squirrel. Yeah. Yeah, critters trying to get in for the winter. Uh, so it'll be in. Yeah. So. An unintended death? Yeah. Unattended death. Yeah, in other words, no, med not medically attended, so we have to go out to it. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, that was, to me, it was kind of tough because I had the DWI the night before, so I was out late for that. Then I had an alarm in the middle of the night. Then I had to come out first thing in the morning for the unattended death, so it made a very uh, long night. Saturday, Sunday. Secretary, do the uh, statistics for uh, September. I will have a work on them. Right. I have something, and I think it's complimentary. Um, you aware of this in the Conway Sun? Yes, I did see that. You want to brief us on it? Uh, well, we were contacted by the Attorney General's office on a uh, person that was. Uh, we're looking to arrest 
Frank Mansfield and Conway, but they're staying in Tuckenboro. Uh, we, uh, it, was a, it was a case handled by the Attorney General's uh, task, Drug Task Force for the county that we work with. Uh, we worked with Wolf, they thought he was going to be in Wolfboro. We ended up finding him in Tuckenboro. We did a felony stop on him with uh, Wolfboro. He was arrested and we assisted with the uh, search warrant. Mm -hmm. warrant securing the house, they did the search warrant, actual, we made sure the house was secure and safe before the, uh, they entered the actual execution and collection of the evidence. But it's, uh, we weren't involved in the actual investigation per se until the end. I want to compliment you and your department. This was an investigation according to uh, the public record uh, that involved Neighbor, neighbor and police departments, February through September. Uh, they purchased over 51 grams, allegedly, of cocaine from this gentleman, invested over $3,600, um, found two AR rifles and handguns in a residence in uh, Tuftonboro. My compliments to the uh, police officers. These are dangerous felony <laughs> stops and uh, they put, their, they put their life on the line. The gentleman was arrested um, on eight counts of cocaine, sale of cocaine, possession with intent to sell, <coughs> all Class A felonies. What's interesting is, according to the uh, Sun reporter, that this fellow dumps three to four hundred dollars daily from sale of drug activities into our area, into our town makes over $100,000 a year. Uh, Chief is very careful not to alarm people, but uh, stuff does happen in Tuftonboro. Thank you. Yeah, we've Good job, Chief. We've been, uh, obviously, the Drug Task Force in Carroll County has been set up uh, by the Attorney General's office. <coughs> it's uh, been very active. Said that it seems to have a pretty good track record of what's going on. So we're uh, obviously <coughs> work with them whenever they need some assistance, and provide their information that they can follow up when they can. Mm -hmm. Well, you had two deaths a couple of years ago, and uh, the death mm -hmm. on this end of town, didn't a couple of people plead uh, guilty to causing his death? Yes, that was the, that was a different task force. That was a strike force with DEA, the interstate police and, and the attorney general's office for uh, overdose deaths that they stood up for, for that particular purpose. Uh, we and I mean we we just had the training on it. Um, I'd gone to it, so I was able to make sure we followed the procedures that they've had in place. Uh, they were supposed to update the training. It hasn't happened. We're work. I've been pushing hard at the attorney general's office to get that up to date. We're. Um, but we got lucky on that too. There were some breaks that, and unfortunately, a lot of people may not get the same answer for their loved ones when they die through an overdose. But in that particular case, we were able to get some lucky breaks. So. Sometimes you make your own breaks, and that's a compliment to you and your officers. Thank you. And anything else for the chief? I'm good. Okay, good. Thanks, Thank chief. You. See you when you come back. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, move on to other things and, and uh, could I ask Andy one thing? Yes. Yeah. Sure. We've got some of our shirts on the paint patches. This is from Jeff Hayes. Yeah, I knew you'd be back. This is Jeff Hayes at uh, uh, Lakes Region Planning. Yeah. My guy Bruce will be car calling Karen on Monday to schedule some times for you folks to use the cell phones and to look for dead spots. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah. That gets to everybody's advantage if we map that out and That's figure right. out what we need. Um, I know it's pretty fluid. Uh, so what's going on with the cell phone? Uh, I know it's Verizon seems to be doing a little better than some other, but then AT&T has ramped up their game for the first net. It may be a change for us. I, 
I know Rockingham County has switched over to AT&T slash FirstNet. There's talk that we may have to edit for our vehicles swap and our work cell phones swap over to that because of the FirstNet core, public safety core, though Verizon has a public safety core, but they don't use it communicate. I also uh, learned that uh, it's important that safety cell phones not have a network that clogs like happened at Columbine and some other tragedies. So. Well, it happened, it's just the sandwich fair, it happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, uh, that's, that's what the first net is about, but also with Verizon, I can get on their public safety core and, and get preemption also too, so it's. Uh, my understanding is that this equipment uh, measures the cell signals on all Areas. of the nets, okay? So we gather the data, it gives us a good a good snapshot of where the holes in the system are and apparently uh, there is a federal program to provide uh, upgrades in, in rural communities that have access problems so uh, and I did reach out to uh, Verizon to have a program for the schools there's a, there's a dead spot there for data which would be critical uh, even outside the building not even within the building so I did reach out to Verizon and they've been uh, in contact with the principal to try and have their engineers come in and see what they can do. So I think that's uh, important too. Good. All right. Again, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, we've got a notice of intent to cut wood for uh, PID 62-1-5. Do I have a motion to? I'll move we sign that. All right, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. elections on Tuesday, uh, November 6th from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, this needs to be signed by the Board of Selectmen. So I'll move we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Compensation law notice of compliance. Uh, this is uh, certifying that we uh, are in compliance with the law on workers' compensation law and administrative regulations of the Labor Commission. I'll move and sign that. Or have the chair sign that. Yeah, second. One is okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? for uh, a, a veterans, all veterans tax credit. Uh, for uh, PID 28-1-58. And this will be for the 2019 tax year. We met all of the requirements, and uh, Karen recommends that uh, it be approved. One, I move we sign that. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?
have uh, memorandums from the planning board, uh, from the chairman of the planning board, uh, who uh, is asking, due to his uh, time commitments, to move from being a member of the board to being an alternate, uh, and also have a memo from the planning board uh, requesting the appointment of Fenton Varney as a full member of the planning board uh, with the term, I think if that would be replacing then that would be just the balance of the existing term, which I don't think is, is three years. Um, on the website, so we'll be replacing John. Yeah. Let me just look real quick. So, we need to act on these uh, requests. Uh, uh, <coughs> with respect to uh, reappointing Fenton Varney to the planning board, uh, I guess I will go on record as saying that uh, I cannot support it because. He resigned at a time when we needed planning board members uh, because he was unhappy about the situation. Um, and, and although he has a lot of uh, experience uh, in planning on the planning board in a town, uh, at a time when we needed him, he stepped away uh, uh, in an effort to uh, make his displeasure with the town noted. Um, and I, uh, um, my feeling is that uh, next time there's a disagreement there that, uh, you know, we'll be right back in the same, uh, same situation. So I, I will um, uh, make a motion to appoint him to uh, be a, a regular member of the planning board. Uh, and that will be to, 2020. That, through 2020. Yeah, mark that for purposes of discussion. Yeah, yeah I guess I'll, I'll second your motion, Chair. Okay. All um, right. I mean, if we eliminated every hothead from being on board, we wouldn't have many people on board sometimes. So, yeah. Benton, I think, had a he took a position and maybe he took it a little strongly, but he, he has an awful lot of knowledge when it comes to the planning board, and I think the planning board can always use a little more knowledge on that. No question about it. So, uh, do we have a second? I'm seconding. Oh, okay. All right. <coughs> Any further discussion? I will be voting no. Pure and simple. Okay, um, I'll move the question. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? No. No. Uh, motion fails. And uh, let's move on. Yeah. Um, and the next. Uh, this is on John. Th this is this is for John to. Uh, be appointed as an alternate uh, to, to step aside as chairman uh, once uh, a, once another individual is uh, identified to step in as the yeah I think I'd, I'd like to see a plan if, if there is one I mean he's the chair currently who's going to be the chair who well who would be the chair when he steps aside? Yeah. Uh, well, whoever the planning board right. elects. So I think maybe a better approach might be for John to step up off the, out of the chairman's role while he's still on the board and then bring, bring forward a, a new chairman and mm -hmm. we'll give John his walking papers. I mean, yep. I really let him up. Well, I mean, and he's, he's not asking to to leave the board until uh, a replacement is appointed. But I, understand, I, I, yeah. I hear what you're saying in terms of us yeah. I mean, serving. It's a work in progress. Yep. 
That's fine with me. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Can I say something? You may. I was there, and uh, John said he had resigned. I thought he gave a letter to the planning board saying, I resigned. I can't do it anymore. Is it, did I hear that wrong, or do I have to go back and look at the I was there that night. Uh, he, he sent uh, this board a letter um, stepping away, and then he sent a letter following up saying he, okay. he, he would stay until we had a, a replacement on the board, and rather than stepping all the way away, he does want to be involved and an want to be an alternate. Correct. So that is a, that is a, uh, a, a modification of his position. From okay, thank you. Yep. Speaking, All right. Speaking of planning, could you please, um, the planning and zoning budget? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep, it's here someplace. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a copy if you I asked Diane why there was two pages, and she said the computer doesn't let her print other than continuous. And what happens is the 4191 is planning and zoning, so these are planning that are normal order. Then there's zoning, and then it was planning again, so that's why the two pages. Mm -hmm. The two pages do add up to um, the total listed of 17,721. Right. right. But we have to vote on them separately, right? No. We uh, it, it's just the computer won't allow her to put it all on one page. No, planning and zoning is similar to what uh, the uh, right. police did, with, uh, or the fire did with buildings, grounds and buildings. Right, only printed those. Well, it's because it's in different areas. Yep. All right, so to walk walk through the request, mm -hmm. uh, the administrative assistant, the adjustment is uh, uh, the uh, uh, just uh, reflects the revised uh, pay table. Uh, tuition reimbursement, asking for an increase from uh, the 2018 level uh, to, to reflect more members attending training. Uh, and uh, if you look at what's expended this year, we've expended $340 against 300 and we have several people attending additional trainings before the end of the year. So it's a reflection of uh, newer members being involved and in the, in the members involved being um, more uh, engaged in the training cycle. Uh, requesting an increase in the advertising budget based upon recent increase in activity that we've seen in uh, applicants that require advertising. Uh, uh, the LRPC dues uh, went up from 42.95 to 44.96 for next year. Uh, I think the other, the other items we're looking for in there uh, are level request from previous years. So the other two lines which are master plan review right. and subdivision engineering fees, are we voting on those separately? 
why not? <coughs> I, you know, it, it's it, 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 it makes, makes it easier, easier because they're already they're already. Yeah, I, I'll make a motion that we approve the planning and zoning budget forty one ninety one oh one for fourteen thousand two hundred twenty one dollars. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? I, I'm sorry, I said I didn't say aye. I, no. I'm okay. In favor. All right. Now uh, we got the other two items, which are forty-one ninety-one oh three and oh four, uh, and the master plan review is separate from the master plan update. Uh, money that was included this year went toward the update, mm -hmm. uh, and the fifteen hundred dollars is for annual review, which is something that should be going on on master plan on an ongoing basis. Okay, so that's separate and apart from the redone master plan. Right. Okay. And last year, it was $4,680, so that would have included that, part of that the That included plan. money toward uh, the master plan update. We encumbered right. money from the year before. We that did. was the contract. Yep. Right. Also, um, we have uh, this pays for printing the master plan once it's completed. Right. All right. I'll make a motion to approve um, planning and zoning budget 4191.03 and 4198.104 for a total of $3,500. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nice job. Thank you. All right, now I gotta find my way back to my agenda here. Don't disclose your file. Selectman's update. Okay, we got, I'll start. Go ahead. We got our um, insurance rates for next year. And if we continue with the current plan that we have, we're looking at an increase of $53,889.48. Anthem did provide us with an, a, an alternative plan, and I think the only thing that we could see that was different, two things were different. One was the employee needs to be conscious of where they're going with their service, their medical services. And the um, cost for x-rays, if they um, are higher. What is that? Is it? I think that's what it was. If, if, um, I have to look at it again. But that was where we found it. Yep. Right. As part of the standard deductible, I think is how it worked out. <coughs> As opposed to you pay for <coughs> Right. So inpatient physician and professional services and x-rays is part of your standard deductible versus the old plan, which is where you would pay zero. Oh, I I think that under regular medical surgical, we said it was still zero, right? But then it's when you get to what, an emergency room or something? Right. <coughs> right. That there is a it's subject to deductible. Right. That's the weird. bottom line being that with those two um, caveats as to the service, that um, particular insurance plan would cost the town an additional 23000 Five hundred and seventy-four dollars. That's also with the assumption that the police department is going to hire a full-time officer that needs a family plan. If that's not the case, then the increase over last year would be three hundred and thirty-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. Um, I think for being, <coughs> being prudent about this, that I'd recommend that we. Budget uh, two hundred ninety-two thousand five hundred ninety-seven dollars and forty cents, which is the total plan cost for 
the alternative and we may or may not spend that additional 23000 out of that for a, a police officer. I, I, right. I, I don't think we can at this, I don't think it's prudent at this point to right. say we're not going to, we don't have them on the payroll today and therefore we're not going to budget for it. Right. Uh, or alternatively, we're going to hire somebody that's not going to want to take the insurance. Uh, I agree with you. I think we need to include that in there. Uh, I had asked that they also provide and it isn't here yet, uh, a high deductible plan as, okay. as an alternate. Uh, as I've, I've been aware that in the past there are some employees that, that don't much use their uh -huh. health insurance and uh, a high deductible plan with an, with an attached account. Uh, and I apologize, I don't remember it, whether it's a uh, Health savings account, a health reimbursement account. There's, there's, there's right. one account that doesn't sunset. The money goes into, and it's always available to the individual right. to to use. And uh, so Diane is pursuing getting that information. It should not have an impact on uh, an, an upward impact on the premium. In other words, if no, it, I think if the premium would be lower, but the, the uh, issue I think is, let's say that employee who chooses a large deductible has a catastrophic occurrence. Right. I think the expectation is going to be, and probably to some legal reason for it, that we would be picking up that deductible. So it's kind of a yeah. sort of partially self-insuring ourselves, but. So we'd still have to have a certain amount of money sitting somewhere right. to cover that. So I guess we're going to do it, the math on that. Yep. Well, it's, uh, it's so something I think we should look at. Sure. But, but I sure. think this is it, this is the number that we got to move forward. Well, I'll have Diane plug this number in, and if she gets the other one, we'll yep. pl plug that in. And, and uh, Then we can go through the employee expenses. Yep. We had a relatively eventful budget hearing, or budget meeting. Um, I had promised to get an answer about why taxes weren't reflected on the quarterly revenue sheets, and I haven't even gotten that answer yet. I got an answer that I didn't understand. That we're just asking for tax money, and we're not really getting it until the end of the year. I'm not sure that's going to satisfy anybody. Yeah. But uh, I think more importantly, if we we can generate a number that we're working from, the only thing that is a variable is people people who don't pay their taxes, which are very rare here. In, it does. In tough to work. Yep. Oh, and I did make the phone call to uh, the uh, doctor about the job out. Yeah. Got what I expected to get, which was a yep. favorable review with no recommendation. So mm -hmm. showed up for work. Yep. Excuse me, would you like to make a motion on the health insurance for now and then change it if need be? Do we have to go to that step? No, I think we'll deal with it in the budget, budget, but she's going to plug it in at yeah. this point as okay. yeah. something to play with. Because um, it changes the... It also gives an opportunity the for the employees to respond. Yep. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, uh, I've got about 15, 20 minutes, and then we're going to have to sunset, we're so... Turn into we're going to turn into pumpkins, yes. Chief? Did you we, already go through... We didn't yeah. go through it, no. We did. We, no fires. We, nice. we, we, le we left it uh, with the hope that you would uh, have an opportunity to join us. I had rescheduled a uh, two gas inspections uh, for later, mm -hmm. and what that was uh, taking a period of time for your first. Yep. Good morning. How are you? Good. I know you gave us your report, and I don't know where, where I put it. So. All right, I'll, I'll look on to this one. Thank you. 
So currently we've done 148 uh, fire calls, 203 EMS calls, 17 service calls, and 17 special details for a total of 385 for the year. Uh, 14 gas furnace inspections, 6 oil burner inspections, 6 wood pellet stove inspections, and 17 life safety inspections for a total of 43. Two, as you know, two of the uh, department personnel took uh, Sluckman and other officials out to Ragged Island. It sounds like that that uh, went fairly well as far as... You even got to tow a, a disabled motor, a motor right. bag. You rescued <laughs> some people. people. Yeah. That's, what the, that's what the guys... That's what the guys... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the central station's yearly sprinkler testing was completed on 1010. Also a five-year internal inspection where they actually take the uh, piping apart in different areas to check that to see if there's rust or uh, um, how the, uh, the pipe is faring and everything uh, went well with that inspection. We passed everything. As you know, three of the budgets uh, that I oversee have gone through yourself and the budget committee. And the last, uh, and that would be uh, fire department, emergency management, and government buildings. The last budget, uh, obviously, is the ambulance budget for 2019. And that remains uh, to be completed. A uh, consortium meeting with Moulton Borough, Santa Harbor, Meredith, and Sandwich is uh, scheduled for 10:24:18. Uh, I found that out on Friday. Uh, so anyone that would like to go to that would, uh, would be uh, decent probably to listen to what they have to say as far as... Uh, and where is that going to be? It's actually going to be held at the Center Harbor Fire Station in the Cary uh, meeting room. I have <coughs> talked to Bob McWhirter and, and I still need to get a hold of Mark Howard. I'd like to set up a meeting between myself, Skip Galvin, Justin Van Adams, and uh, the Selectman's representative or Selectman in reference to any questions and for the ambulance itself mm -hmm. so that we can uh, go over some, uh, some things. I did get a price also on Friday uh, for continuation for 2019 of 192000 $479.19, which is approximately 2.5% increase over last year's $188,036 uh, as far as contract was. And that's a one-year contract? That's, that's a one-year contract. The, co the consortium's contract is up in another year, is that correct? I, I think that's will, what I, I was told. so, yeah. uh, but we would find out further as far as as far as that yeah. goes. The, right now, currently, between paramedic coverage and the amount, that's about, the 192 is about what Moulton Burrow is paying uh, for, for one ambulance. Um, so that's not, not too far off. But the, they have a guaranteed paramedic, one uh, in-house, 24 hours a day with, with that also. They pay extra. Uh, Twenty-nine thousand dollars for that, uh, that coverage. Um, what I probably would recommend, as far as our discussion and stuff, for you know, for future, is that we go at least one more year with contract with uh, stewards, mm -hmm. see how we make out as far as transporting, and make sure that we're into you know that how things are going. Overall, I think that uh, if we had a complete year, we would have a better idea of how you know, things would go mm -hmm. and transport whenever we have to. And uh, this this last uh, two weeks, we've transported too many people, so um, we're not making millions off of uh, the the transports and things like that. And I have uh, have further information. Mm -hmm. um, that you can uh, that you can look over before that. Thank you. Thanks. So we we currently have billed out thirty one thousand seven hundred seventeen dollars through contractual 
agreements as far as like Medicare and all the different insurance companies. You minus fifteen thousand nine hundred sixty dollars and sixty seven cents, which would leave you um, fifteen thousand seven hundred fifty six dollars and thirty three cents, mm -hmm. and then there's an adjustment of one thousand four hundred eight dollars and seventy one cents, which would show our payments right now currently of four thousand seven hundred twenty two dollars and forty seven cents. $503.32 has been written off, and that's under Medicare. And after what we have paid quick med claims uh, for the services that they have uh, done, which is $401.40, we've uh, made $4,321.07. The balance is $9,121.80. And I apologize that this is uh, small. We haven't figured out how to. So then it this, is, a this is the eye test, yeah. So the actually so the eight and a half percent, the four hundred one forty. Yep, is what we paid for the for, for them to do all of this work right. as far as uh, the bill and yeah. do everything. Yeah. And this, and it looks like the average run would be about eight hundred seventy-five dollars and thirty-five cents that they've averaged it out. Uh, well, that's, that's gross. Though. That's not. That's not what we're netting. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's for a total of eighteen. That does not include the two transports that we just did in the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So this started when? Wasn't like April or March? Uh, it started. It says one one nineteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it is more like one one eighteen. Was it January that we started doing this? I don't think we had the billing set up until later in the spring. Yeah, it, it, it was, a, I believe it was a little bit later because for the first, uh, the first bill that I received from them was like March. So uh, I would say probably March would be the, the month that okay, we... Okay, we can establish that for a reference point okay. too so that we've got an annualized average going on because it's from March to September let's say you did 15,000 you could we could probably project 30,000 for a year for a year yeah. right. okay. Thanks. and we'll we'll see if we can find something that's a little bit this is this is pretty easy to figure out as far as it goes but there may be something that's a little less complicated mm -hmm. it just gives you the down, this is what it is. Yeah, so, I mean, Medicare and Medicaid have taken a 50% deduction on right off the top. On the rate. We've come up with an alternate plan on repairing the cement apron at Melbourne Village Station. We are going to uh, head out the rusted metal angle line and repair any damaged areas in the uh, the cement with a, uh, a product that we had found called the uh, Concrex. And uh, that product is on order. It's a, uh, like a two-part product. And you put a, uh, you put <coughs> a product down first mm -hmm. to have the two cements sealed together. Um, what we have found is that uh, pulling, actually pulling out the old the old uh, cement right now is going to be a huge, you know, pretty good sized product, project as far as doing that. And we want to see if we can take care of the, the whole project mm -hmm. without having to, to do so. There's about eight inches of tar in the, uh, the front parking area. And there's a possibility that uh, if this does not work, then it would we may be able to take care of the issue with tarring up to a certain area instead of putting in an mm -hmm. apron and just putting a small area of cement in. Um, but it would take quite a bit of a, you know, it would be quite a project. Mm -hmm. It would be something that we would have to uh, have a couple of estimates come in because I think that they would actually have to grind down some of the, uh, the tar and stuff further out. And we have to be very careful about 
how much tar we take out because of the, the ramp and stuff like that. Right. If you've uh, seen in the past, as far as trucks and stuff backing up in, you notice that they rub uh, you know, the back of them. The longer the truck is, the longer they, they rub um, you know, the semis and stuff that might turn around there and take some chunks out of the tar mm -hmm. just because of the hills. Um, so we're going to be very careful about that. And uh, if all goes well, uh, we may get out of it cheaper than, um, than what we had planned for, Great. for that and not have to do that. Mirror Lake Station, they've started to uh, paint that. The same uh, person that had done the highway department. So hopefully that will uh, be done soon if it stops raining. And on uh, the exhaust systems, uh, all the maintenance is uh, going to take care of all the different stations, mm -hmm. and that's all set. And currently, uh, personnel is at the Center Tuffman School doing fire safety. Um, that's why I had to leave and do an inspection. <coughs> okay. okay. I have a couple things for him. Uh, Bruce from Lakes Region Planning is sending stuff about the cell phone testing okay. program. Yep. Thank you. Anything that can make communications easier for you or safer. Uh, the other thing is, you came, it's in our correspondence, but you're the one who came up with the yellow GPS warning signs for our back roads. Uh, it's under correspondence. Yep. Remember, we wanted to update that, so thank you. Uh, the other thing is, one of your guys, uh, Ralph Boussier, was honored as Citizen of the Year by the Grange. Uh, what a nice honor it was, and I'm going to ask. Uh, if we have Karen send him a letter okay. uh, recognizing that uh, he's a hard worker for you, I know. Uh, just as uh, an ob observation about your activity summary, Anthem hasn't paid you any money at all. So you've got 3275 owed and nothing paid, mm -hmm. and patient pay, there's no collections there either. So you've got Five thousand dollars. Right. And Anthem uh, is really slow about it. Yeah, you think? Yeah. On the patient pay, are we taking credit cards? I mean, what are we doing there? That's sending out a bill. That's totally. Uh, I think does that happen here, or does it happen at the town office? As far as yeah, that would happen at the town office. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah. All right. So I'll talk to them. Yeah. No, okay. Some someone came in at one point in time from the credit card company, and they said, "Oh, yeah, this is you know one of the places that they said that uh, um, we'll accept this." So I'm like, "No, we don't have any any way of accepting credit cards." So I think that was, um, I and I had sent them to the town office to, to check in uh, further, but uh, I would assume that that has to do with what you're talking. About. I don't know. Doesn't well, the, the ta aren't the taxes? Can't you pay by credit card now? Yes, yeah, but no. that mm -hmm. that that may be separate from our ability. Any other ability to use a credit oh, card. Okay. I would think that the billing company that we use would take credit cards from people. Yeah. I, I to, to so this eight and a half percent that we're paying to them, don't, do they collect? It, as far as collection agency, we we no, are they're, aren't they billing as well? Yes, yes, they're, they're billing as us as far as it goes, and they collect the, the money as far as it goes. Okay, so they need a phone call. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank we'll check you. With that. All right. Thanks, Chief. Have a good day. Thanks. Gentlemen, I hate to do this, but I am up against a good deadline here. Uh, and, and I know we have a brief on public to do. Is there any other item you're aware of that? No. Absolutely have to deal with today. Not a thing. Are you fine with the flu clinic being on the 31st? I'm sorry? The flu clinic. I would like to know about that. So on on what? The on, flu clinic. On the 31st? 31st? From 10 to 12? Uh, I didn't think you. I, I think that's, that's I have, fine. I have yeah. my the flu, flu shots. shots. I need a yes or no from you, Mr. Chairman. I went through mm -hmm. yep. and did the road agent status, including the 58,000 set aside. Right. And what the amount remaining, and we have outstanding bills, the Fletch bill, yeah. the Freightliner bill, the painting bill, mm -hmm. um, crack sealing, and sander repairs, and I want to assist the road agent that he only has that amount to spend until December 31st. Uh, out of, uh, yeah, the, 
this is what this already set yes. aside. Right. That's right, right. Right. Okay. So you want to you want to communicate with that that with him? That's fine with me. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've got a, a number of questions for the road agent. I mean, you talked about not replacing the six wheeler mm -hmm. and putting that out for bid. He's purchased one. Well, yeah, that's fine. But I want it out for bid. Because we had, he's at that point where he's just setting whatever rate he needs to do to make money. I need to know what the market rate is. Yeah, right. So it's not that simple. Oh, yeah. have, they have sent out some bids. In, in All right. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? Part of non-public. All right. We need a. Well, I, oh, public comment. Sure. Yes. Okay. I just had a question. You have that presentation. Are you looking to make a decision on that for next year's budget? Yes. Yeah. Right. And next year's map updates. Actually, do we have any money this year for that? We didn't do that. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't right. budget for that. Okay. Uh, so we will have, yeah, for, we got some personnel issues to deal with. So 91A. Three Roman two, uh, parent A. Okay. All be yes. Would yes. Marcus and yes. And I second your motion. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank All right. You.